Hey, here we are. We are about 24 to 48 hours now before the contest. This is being filmed Monday Pacific time about 4.40 p.m. And it's an annual tradition on this channel. I try to get out a final advice video. Many people come here for a good luck feeling and just kind of a one more uh, rally the troops, so to speak, before you go into your battle on the contest, which is mostly against yourself and the contest makers who have designed this wonderful contest that we get to take or you get to take uh, se several times in your life. And so with that, it's called winning time. And we all know what that means. Winning time is the last four minutes of the fourth quarter in the NBA. It's the last two minutes uh, of the game in the NFL. And so it's things like that. It's at the end of the game. It's, it's the time that you need to put forth your best effort in order to succeed, in order to win. And as you know me, I love quotes, and I've modified these quotes a little bit when I could. Um, this obviously didn't have the, per the parenthetical notation in the quote at the time the quote was made because it's several thousand years old, but they're still very, very good pieces of advice. For a man or a human to conquer themselves is the first and noblest of all victories. So you're going to this, this test to do battle with your wits, with your intelligence, with your capabilities, with your preparation, with how quickly you can think and respond to adversity and curveballs, things that you weren't expecting to see and suddenly having to react in that moment. It's a battle of wits and it's a battle against yourself and how well you can control your emotions. And so that's it. In order to be able to succeed on the test, you're first going to have to be able to conquer yourself. This is the most important and the first and noblest of all victories. So what do we mean by that? Or what do I mean by that? Maybe not all of what Plato meant by it, but I'm utilizing it for my purpose here. You're going to have to control your anxiety, your fear, your emotions before, during, and after the contest. Too many students, the anxiety overwhelms them. And the more that you subject yourself to challenges that you will face of this nature, the better you will get. Obviously, there's a natural maturation process over time by which you gain greater and greater control of submitting your emotions to your will. It's not that you don't feel things, it's that you learn to manage the feelings in a better, more healthy way. So that, by the way, is a key, a key concept within Stoicism. Highly recommend when you get to university, and all of you will, that you do take a philosophy course amongst your courses. You're going to love it. It was one of my favorite courses, and I almost majored in that. So how are you going to do this, though? This is great to say, but how? It's not an easy answer. It's something we kind of learn over time by ourselves, with ourselves, by thinking about how we're going to achieve it. And I would recommend, uh, down here, I'll get to some more ways uh, uh, as well, you learn to meditate. You learn to sit with yourself and your thoughts and shut out all the noises and the bleeps and the, and the little notifications and on your phone making sounds and flashes of little lights. Oh, you've got to, no, get all of that out and just sit with yourself, with your thoughts and be more comfortable in that space. I think out in nature near a river or a waterfall or in a forest or something like that, is a great way to do this at the beach if you're near a beach all of those kinds of things so one other way though how to be able to do this is start changing the way you're looking at the test you're looking at, at this at this fearful obstacle that you need to get past but instead what you should see it as is your opportunity it's an opportunity for you to go and demonstrate what you're capable of and for those of you who maybe fall a question short that doesn't mean you're not capable of it it just means this didn't show in this opportunity. An example of this would be the Blue Jays. They played a fantastic World Series and they were every bit deserving to be world champions of baseball in the Major League Baseball series, the World Se Series as it's called. They had a seven game series. It went to game seven. It went to extra innings. It was one of the closest World Series I've seen in a long time. And it was just amazing. And they were deserving of being champions, but they just weren't crowned a champion. Many of you will be deserving of an Amy Qual, and yet you might fall a little bit short. But guess what? You would never qualify if you didn't have the opportunity to do so. So think about it in that way. You get two shots. It's two chances for you to demonstrate your ability. And just because you don't doesn't mean you don't have that said ability. There are many students who never made Amy at all. They go on and got great careers in mathematics. In the future, the very near future, I'll share you a story that's important to me of a student that I once had, and uh, you'll see that video come out in the next few weeks. So 
Uh, speaking of opportunity, another quote, no human is more unhappy than he or they who never faces adversity, for they are not permitted to prove themselves. I'm modifying the language again. Seneca. And so again, this is a great thing. If you never get to face adversity, you never have the chance to per permitted to be able to prove your capabilities in this space. And make no mistake, this is not an easy test. If you're a parent watching this, this is not really a math test. It's a test of your time management. It's a test of how well you can manage your emotions. It's a test of how well you can set aside your ego and know when to skip a problem. It's being able to have the intuition to know when to skip. They're gonna put probably 10 questions on the test that are laid out in a way that no one's ever seen before on any test. It doesn't matter if you did all the past tests and you know all the formulas, you're gonna have to think in an open space. It's an open-ended problem solve. And the amount of time it takes you depends on what you perceive in that moment. But all of the rules you've ever made coming into that point, they don't necessarily apply. Instead, on those problems, you're going to have to hypothesize what you think is happening, and then you're gonna to prove to yourself that that's what's going on and try to utilize that mechanism to find a faster solve process. There's a lot of questions like that on the test. It's not rote memorization like a school math test. And that's why this is probably one of the hardest tests you will ever take. Probably harder than the other Olympiads, in my opinion, to do well on. That's my opinion. So, other ways that you can learn to control Number one, learn to meditate. Learn to be able to sit with just your thoughts, no devices, nothing, nobody bothering you, no notifications, no screens. I recommend you work on this in your off time after the test is over as well. Go sit in nature. Just being around trees automatically lowers the stress in the blood and it, it rejuvenates the body to be out there. Go with friends, go with family, go by yourself. You don't necessarily have to have someone to go with. Go sit by the beach and the ocean and the waves and go out by the trees and go by waterfalls and rivers and listen to the birds and the sounds of nature, okay? And while you're there, don't be constantly on your phone and looking at things, just sit and be with yourself and your thoughts and think about what your goals are in life and various things of that nature. There's lots of ways to meditate. You can probably learn them from other speakers besides me. Look it up on YouTube if you're looking for, for, for things. Other things, breathing techniques, box breathing, which is, it's breathing in for four seconds, holding it for four seconds, breathing out for four seconds, holding for four seconds, breathing in, and you just kind of go like that in a box, which is why it's called box breathing. When you practice this, often in conjunction with meditation as well, it's proven to lower cortisol, which is the stress hormone in the blood. Other things that you might try, uh, you can look up a box breathing video and have some guru guide you through it. Don't just take the way I just did it. Have someone walk you through that process. Breathing techniques are famous for being able to control anxiety and emotions. Don't discard them. It's not pseudoscience. Um, you can also try, and by the way, maybe, I am not a doctor. You're going to have to ask your parents permission for this. Uh, Indian ginseng, otherwise known as ashwagandha, um, this is something that can help lower cortisol in the blood. It is a nightshade. If you do take it on a regular basis, you're supposed to cycle it. Nightshades can cause damage to your liver if taken forever and you don't take breaks. And so they build up in the body over time. Also, probably look up proper dosing. The Reddit forum on supplements has quite a bit of things about ashwagandha. Some people like it, some people don't. I've used it personally and I think it works great. It does calm you down. I know several students who have tried it as well, and it's something that you might try. Generally, what I feel is the dosing, a lot of times on the packages, might be a little too high. I would go lower end on the dosing. So I have a pure powder form. It says like a half a teaspoon a day. I do like a tenth of a teaspoon, and I still receive the benefits of it. But again, you're going to have to ask your parents for permission, and this is not medical advice stated one more time. I'm not a doctor. Okay, so look into that on your own, something to consider. Otherwise, mentally prepare. Another way video you can do this with is the Amy Mindset. This is the third most watched video out of all the videos on my, my, my channel. Highly recommend you take a gander at that before the contest. Many students have already been watching it. It's great to do it within about 48 hours uh, of the contest starting to kind of get your mind in the right space to be able to succeed at your what? At your opportunity.
Okay? So I would recommend you don't skimp on sleep while you're studying. You're not going to gain that much knowledge overnight, the next night, and the next night. Mostly this is a time that you should be reviewing everything that you learned. You should be mentally preparing for the contest. That includes eight to nine hours of sleep. Your performance goes down when you're not getting enough sleep. It's scientifically proven. Look into the studies if you like. Eight to nine hours, minimum eight. If you go maybe seven and a half, but young people, people that are under, you haven't you know, reached 25 yet, they actually need more sleep. That's when your body grows and things like that. So I wouldn't skimp on this. I wouldn't go below that. Your small notebook review, if you don't know what the small notebook is, you've watched this channel long enough, you probably should. They're all the key concepts and ideas. I would be going through that thing over and over and over again so that all of the ideas are on the tip of your tongue. Another channel you might check out is Sohil Rathi's. It's links in the ch my channel list down below. He has a AMC 10 and AMC 12 crash course. Kid's really smart. I don't know what university he went to. He's doing better than me on U U YouTube. He's got like two and a half million views on there. And he's, a, he's just a good kid, fantastic all around with his content. You might benefit from that. It's got a bunch of key ideas. It might be worth it to go there and watch that. Um, there's also a formula list. If you go to my Discord server, I've pinned it in the general chat where you can go find that list um, that was created of a bunch of key formulas. So you might join the Discord temporarily for that. Don't get stuck in the general chat talking nonsense. Focus on preparing for your chance at your opportunity to succeed. Okay, um, guessing. Should you guess if you think you're close? No, I would never guess. Even if I got down to two answers, only then maybe and there might be a time where you sense something is true, but you just don't know how to prove it under the pressure of time. You might at those points go, I'm trusting my intuition. I really feel this is true. I just can't think of a way to demonstrate it. And if it's true, this is the solution. Then maybe at those times, but it is a judgment call. Random guessing, heck no, definitely not. You get 1.5 points if you skip. And I've had several students miss their qualification because they decided to guess thinking they needed one more. If you're doing the AMC 10, you probably need to be safe around 16 to be super safe. 16 right and 9 skips is a 109.5. It hasn't been that high in over five years. Probably you're safe at 105 as well. So you could do 105 would be 15 right and 10 skips. Um, if you're on the AMC 12, 12 right and 13 skips is a 91.5. Very likely to be good, but not guaranteed. Obviously, if you can get to 13 or 14 right and the rest skips, uh, then you have a higher chance. Main thing there, if you're playing that tight of a, a line, you're going to have to be very careful to not be wrong. So uh, anticipate, back to the emotional things, anticipate setbacks. Anticipate that, anticipate that nasty problem seven or four or 11, Emily on the dock with the boat going back and forth. Whatever it is, if it's troubling you, just skip it. It's not a loss. It's a time management decision. Everything that you skip, you can return to later on. Just go past it, do things that come past it. Once you've answered all the questions that you feel great about, maybe you go back and get that one. And now you're able to perceive its solution path because you're not afraid of everything that comes after that point in the contest. So be prepared to skip. You should probably by number 15 have skipped a couple times. When should you skip about other ones? Something with casework where you've got a bunch of cases and it's going to take you a long time to figure out. Any problem where you're a minute in and you're just absolutely bewildered, no idea what to do, you've written everything you can think of at that point, all the starts and you just don't see how it fits. Just skip it, but don't take emotional damage. Just go to the next one and get your points. Last year on the 2024 10B, the last three questions, all of them, were very solvable, some of them in under 45 set seconds. I have my last video, number 24, but problem 23, very accessible as well, and 25 too, easily both solved under five minutes for the experienced student. Meanwhile, there were questions earlier in the test that were absolutely demoralizing, especially if you can't set your ego aside and skip. One last thing, I will have a small notebook class, a mini session next Saturday and Sunday, probably four hours. If you're interested in this, reach out to my email at my website. It will be in the description of the video, or you can go to my channel page and click the business email and send it to me there. One last quote as well, because we love those. Luck 
which is what I'm giving you, is what happens when preparation, what you did up until now, meets with opportunity from Seneca. So with that, I tell you, good luck. I'll try to get my solutions out by 5 a.m. Uh, Pacific time on Thursday, but no guarantees. I have to get the contest after midnight and try to film as quickly as I can overnight. If I can get it, I will pull an all-nighter and film as much of my own solutions as I can to have them at that time to give you some idea of ways that you could have gone about solving. Again, one last time, good luck.